No, this is like a 40. Probably like gonna be like 40. 40 or 41. That's huge. Good lord. <laughs> Woo! So it was my brother uh, Rick and, and his son Jorge that slept in here as you can see. But there's no air mattresses we used. Um, we just used uh, our sleeping bags and uh, when you're sleeping in the sand, if you haven't done that, man, you feel every single damn lump. Every single lump. Yeah, this is uh, far from <laughs> This is far from our sleep number bed at home. Something happened last night. Unfortunately, I didn't have it on camera. Three in the morning, I hear rustling right around the tent area right here. And uh, it just, I didn't know if it was a person or if it was an animal or what it was. But when I came out, yeah, there was this huge coyote right here and he wouldn't leave. So apparently he went to town on camp. That's our fault for not putting away food, for not, you know, taking the necessary steps. But yeah, there's chicharrones, my cutting board. You know, there's stuff all over the place here. Uh, apparently he doesn't like chile piquin. Um, but yeah, it, it's just a, uh, Look, you can see right here. Check out the tortillas. He ruined an entire paquete of tortillas. <laughs> you know? But I don't think he likes I don't I don't think he likes tortillas too much. He just wanted to taste them. Now we gotta clean up uh, the mess and we learned a lesson there. So the coyote wouldn't leave. He wouldn't leave. And uh, I tried all sorts of stuff, you know, you know sh shouting at him, yelling at him. He just wouldn't leave. So I had to pop off around, you know, to see if uh, he would leave. And yeah, that finally made him, made him take off. Um, and he just disappeared behind those dunes right there. But uh, yeah, I'm telling you, it's never boring. You know, always gonna have some sort of adventure and a story to tell about the coyote that came here and and uh, tore through the camp. So we finally packed up camp. Um, look at the way the ocean is. It's so beautiful, so calm. It's not angry anymore. You can see over there just how nice the beach looks. It is a little chilly, a little windy, but no big deal. Uh, guys, uh, I got a big problem over here. My, My brother says there's a big problem over there with his truck. Let's go check it out. Another mechanical problem sprung up with a blazer, and my brother decided to call it a day. We escorted them back to Beach Access 6 to make sure they didn't encounter any issues on the way home. Hey guys, well, man, what an adventure. Already in this, this morning, uh, my brother's truck broke down and uh, found out it was a fuel pump. It was leaking a lot of fuel and uh, he just decided to pack it in, uh, put it back on the trailer and take it back home. Um, little things, you know, it caused the uh, major delays uh, on this trip it's a Sunday and uh, we're barely making our way out to the East Cut um, really really running late um, however we're gonna be here until Wednesday so we still have plenty of plenty of time to enjoy ourselves so it's not a big deal uh, but we're gonna make the best of it and uh, the party will continue as we drove along the beach, I noticed the high tide had washed up debris. I'm glad we decided to wait out the surge from the cold front. After a few minutes into our drive, I encountered my friend Ray, aka the Blue Line 5.0 on YouTube. 
He was on his way back from the East Cut where he had camped out. Ray and his friend briefed me on the East Cut conditions and shared some of their highlights with me. Here's a couple of his video clips from Friday and Saturday. All right, we came to a point where uh, I'm gonna have to probably call it quits because I don't think I'm gonna make, make it towards the end to the East Cut because the tide is getting high. I thanked Ray and his companion for the valuable intel, and we continued to the east cut. We finally made it and found a suitable campsite away from the water. At this point, it was still cool and rain clouds were visible on the horizon. So we have built a base camp and uh, it's my brother, Rick, right over here, and my nephew, Jorge. And what we're doing is we're just waiting for this uh, rain to uh, go by. I've seen several people out here fishing and catching reds. Um, we, we are, our, our main priority was to get here, find a good place to camp, and uh, settle in, finally have some lunch. We've lost track of time. We don't even know what time it is. You know, we don't, there's no phone, cell phone service out here, so it's not like we care about that anyway. But I can't say that we have, uh, we're having a bad time. At least I'm not having a bad time. I love being out here. Guys, I don't know if you can tell, but you know, I, I hear it's supposed to be um, gay spring break at the island. Well, I don't know about that, but that'd be a sign. See the rainbow over there. And it's fabulous. So you've been following my channel. If you know that, you know I'm still learning. We're still learning. Coming out here, that's part of the fun. And today we're doing something different. My brother here, Rick, had a wonderful idea. He thought it would be uh, pretty cool to go buy a crab trap. He followed the rules, made sure everything was registered. Yeah, uh, I figured it might be something neat, you know, just in case if we don't catch any fish. Hey, at least we can have some crabs. But we've never done this before, so let's see what it looks like. Let's take a look. Wow. wow! Wow! It's not a bust. Yeah, no, not a bust at all. But you know what? We got one crab. That's good. It's better than zero. <laughs> I guess the crab trap works. Uh, who would have guessed? Huh? It's a blue crab and it's a male. It doesn't have all the eggs, so we can. This is definitely a keeper. It's over five inches from stem to stem. We're good, right? Oh, I guess the four of us can share one crab tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have some for breakfast, Rob. We'll, we, got, we just got to give it some time. Yeah, well, we're going to do the Mexican dad breakfast. Everything with huevo, man. <laughs> you put everything with egg and... Uh, lots of chile and lots of garlic. Garlic, chile, tomate, cebolla. Yeah. And you got yourself a Mexican dad breakfast. Thank oh, you. maybe maybe some queso. Yeah, yeah. Maybe some work. cheese. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what we do. Number paque. It's government cheese. Hey, government cheese. It's late in the afternoon. Today's been quite an adventure. I, I've, you know, uh, I've been fighting this cold. Still came out here. I haven't had, haven't had a cold in over a year and a half. I've been waiting so long, planning for so long to have this trip, and then all of a sudden. You know, I'm stricken with this cold, it sucks. But I'll tell you what doesn't suck. The fishing today has been great. Yes, it's just been, I don't know, like how many ladyfish, but you know, ladyfish put up a good fight, man. I I had I enjoyed myself with ladyfish, you know. I mean they were they were they did they did fine. We did get uh, quite a bit of whiting and that's what we're gonna be uh, having for dinner actually. 
that was the plan. That was the goal, is to actually be able to uh, catch our own dinner. And uh, so the high tide had been coming in over here. And uh, so we decided to camp a little closer to the edge of the dunes here. Um, we put our little uh, privacy tent over here, our bathroom. Got a little canopy going, a little kitchen, the coolers. Then I have uh, the tent, you know, set up over here. This is supposed to be base camp. And uh, I got Sandy, Sandy, uh, my GX460. Uh, she's acting kind of like the mothership. Uh, she's the pantry. You know, that's where we're keeping the food and some of the other supplies. This is basically the stationary vehicle, the go-to vehicle. Uh, first aid, anything that is of an emergency. And then we have my brother's Jeep over here. The Jeep is uh, dedicated to scouting and uh, doing some other stuff uh, like that. So the Jeep really helps. Guys, I didn't even make this up. As we speak, I'm getting a surprise visit from my little brother, Junior. He actually made it out here. That's amazing. We had given up on him. We thought he wasn't going to make it. But he's here. Let's go say hi. He, he fucking ma made it! He made it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No Happy signal? Kind of scary because there's no signal. So happy. He didn't know. I mean, we were we didn't have communication yesterday. Nothing, man. We, we tried, we tried uh, texting back and forth a little bit. And then now you've made it out here. What happened, man? I just made my way out here. Ran to a few. I mean, the tide was kind of high. Ran to a few guys out here. But shit, we kind of stayed together. And they told me, you know what? There's a soft there right over here. That way we can continue this way. They were going to fish on that side. But he's like, hey, if you get stuck, we got you, man. So, te amo tirar porras. <laughs> so, I got to ask him. I got to ask him. Did, did you know for sure we were going to be at this spot? No. No. I thought we were going to be right over here, right at the east cut. I didn't think I was going to have to come in here, but we're here now. What did you think? What did you think uh, when, when, when you came over here and you were like, oh my God, where are these guys? Is that what was going through your mind? Uh, what happened? You know, to tell you the truth, I almost made my mind up to say, you know what? I'm going to camp out right over here. I'll call them in the morning, see where they're at. But you know what? I said, screw it. There's still enough light in the day and let's go at it. And luckily... Found everybody over here camping out. He says he was gonna Woo. call me in the morning. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good luck, bro. <laughs> Bird signals. Bird signals. <laughs> Maybe smoke signals. <laughs> I'm just fucking happy that he made it here. It's complete, man. This is awesome. This is gonna be great. So nothing like uh, good fishing, good catching. Thank you, Rob. Look at that. Fresh fish. Crab. Crab. We took a well-earned dinner break, but then the fishing action picked up. My nephew Jorge hooked up with another bull red on dead mullet. We caught some of the action on video. A la torre, a la torre, está grande. Míralo. A la madre. Eso, eso campeón, dele, dele, dele. Ahora, trata de enderezarlo así para arriba. O sea, pausa para arriba, o sea, el, el reel para arriba, ándale así. Ahora, ahora, reel y hazle para abajo. Arremángalo y hazlo para abajo. No, no le suelte, no le suelte porque se te va. Ahí lo trae, mijo, ahí lo trae. Eso campeón, eso campeón. Déjate, te quito la bolsa de aquí. Ahí lo trae campeón, ahí lo trae, todavía lo trae, es tuyo, es tuyo, mijo, ya mero sale, ya mero sale, papá. Míralo, míralo. Eh, para afuera, para afuera, sáquelo para afuera. Eso, campeón, eso. Mira nomás que monstruo. Unfortunately, we only have a picture of Jorge's first red drum and my brother Junior's 40-inch monster. Yeah! <laughs>
<laughs> why are we acting stupid? Like, why are we acting like this is not a fucking deal? It's good. It's huge. To, we're still trying to believe it. Yeah, oh, dude. Lord. Okay. We got to go get more, man. Okay, that's going to be yours, right? That's it. All right. That's your for the year. All right. Good job, Junior. Hey, what you got there, brother? I don't know. I think it might oh. be a catfish. Oh. Oh. <laughs> A few minutes later, my brother Rick brought in another big boy. We caught part of the action with a phone mm. camera. Bring her, bring her out, bring her out, bring her out. Keep coming, keep coming. Oh my God, Great job, Rick. Oh, brother. <laughs> Very neat, man. It's exciting. Caught me off guard. I think you'll agree we squeezed the heck out of day two. On day three of our five-day trip to the East Cut. He's 45, brother. 45. Fishing action at the channel continues, and we get a special visit from one of our viewers. Thank you for watching. As always, please hit the like button if you enjoyed our content. Your subscription and support is greatly appreciated.